Hello, my name is Travis Falbert with Garden Sphere. Welcome to our EnviroHouse how-to video on mason bees. Today we're going to be dealing with the Blue Orchard Mason Bee, which is a wonderful native pollinizer to our Pacific Northwest area. Mason bees are different than honeybees in a matter of respects, most of which is that they're individual creatures, not a hive. They also are very docile, rarely if ever stinging, and they pollinize early season crops. So if you have fruit trees or berries, including blueberries, raspberries, strawberries, and native plants, they are all very effective pollinizers for that. Mason bees emerge sometime in February, pollinize through late May, and go back to cocoon and seed state by early June. Whereas honeybees rarely come out before mid-March and pollinize all of our late season crops, including vegetables, hops, etc. Today we're looking at a variety of mason bee houses. This is a more elegant house that you put reed or cardboard tubes in. Mason bees look for a very specific diameter of hole to seed their eggs in to become future cocoons. A good house should have an overhang of at least an inch to protect from wind, rain, and other weather. The variety of tubes are your personal preference. Here we're looking at two different ones. The first is a reed tube. Naturally, mason bees would nest in this. Reed being a type of grass growing mostly in riparian wet zones, the grass breaks off, exposes the hole, and that's where the mason bee will lay. More contemporary is the cardboard tube, which is easier for maintaining mason bee houses. In this instance, we have a secure cardboard tube with an insert that you can change out from year to year for hygiene purposes. For people that do get a little bit more than novice, this is what we call a mason bee wood structure. This would just set into the house, much like the tubes are. It's very important to keep in mind that you do not have to fill up an entire house with all tubes or wood blocks. It only has to be a portion. What this allows you to do is then simply open the wooden uh, container and harvest those cocoons with very, very little effort. The cocoons themselves look like this, about the size and shape of a jelly bean. And mason bees are interesting in that the male bees are smaller, so the smaller cocoons indicate male, larger cocoons indicate female. Mason bee tubes need to be at least five to six inches deep because the mother bees will lay anywhere between two and six eggs in here that will form into cocoons with the females being farther back in the tube and the males being forward in the tube. Once she's finished laying those eggs she will go collect native mud, mud the front of the tube over which is where the name mason bee comes from. That process will all happen and finish before early to mid-June. Today at the Enviro House, we're going to be installing a very simple PVC house, which is great for the beginner. It's inexpensive and it's easy to work with. You'll notice in there that it's already seated with tubes for you to use. It has this nice detachable front so that we can seed that house. By seeding the house initially, we're going to take the cocoons and just gently push them into random tubes. Most mason bees come in sets of 10 to 12 cocoons, and that's all you need to start a house. By randomly selecting the 10 holes, they'll naturally emerge when the timing and the temperature is correct for them, and then they'll come back to the house that they emerged from and lay their eggs. The first year, you may get 10 tubes mudded over, the second year, 15, and by the third or fourth, fourth year, you'll have a full house. After that, if you don't add additional houses or harvest the cocoons to give to friends or community gardens, once the house is full, the bees will migrate on and find other natural places to lay, which is absolutely acceptable as well. Once our cocoons are seeded into those tubes, we're gonna slip that protective weather cover over, and then we're gonna show you where that should go onto the house. It's gonna go about six to 10 feet up on the house on the eastern side of the house, though as long as you have adequate protection from the weather, you could go on a different cardinal direction. All right, so now that we've installed our mount up there, we're gonna go ahead and simply push this guy in there. Again, you're gonna buy your bees and install your houses in the January through early February timeframe. Like I said, a lot of people just naturally leave their houses up year round, but if you want to be a more valiant beekeeper, you're going to go ahead and pull those cocoons out of the tubes sometime after you've seen the mud form, which can be mid-June through early August. 
Some reasons that people choose to do that, again, are to give them to family members, community gardens, friends. But another reason is that squirrels and some large birds, such as flickers and crows, can go after the cocoon. So by pulling them down in the summer, keeping them in the refrigerator over the summer and fall, and putting them back up in the early winter, is a great way to protect those bees from predators. Again, my name is Travis Valbert with GardenSphere. I appreciate you watching our EnviroHouse how-to on mason bees. Be sure to subscribe to our channel, like us, and comment below. And we will look forward to seeing you on the next video.